Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And this is episode number 239. Yeah, it is. 239. What is our topic today? This is conscious living. Cool. Yeah. It goes well, I think, with what we talked about last week. Yeah, right? definitely. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Right on. Yeah. Before we do that, anything that you want to talk about from last week? Yes. So last week we did living in the moment. Yep. And I got this question from Katie. She said, I know we are supposed to live in the moment, but we are also supposed to put the work in for what we want. So where's the line between planning for the future and or trying to work and make something happen and living in the future and not in the present? And so we talked about this a little bit and she's yeah. like, I'm a total overthinker, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And I understand where she's coming from, but I think that this is kind of coming from a different angle. Yeah. So like, for example, Danny and I are both very focused on our futures and where we're going. And we do think about it and we do put a lot of work and hard work and time into it. Uh But when we go out and we're doing things that are out, we're not thinking about that. No. We're not supposed to be. We're supposed to be thinking about what we're doing when we're doing it is the whole point of living in the moment, whether it's, you know, being out with family or being on the phone Mm -hmm. with somebody or whatever it is, we're supposed to be in the moment. It's not about not planning for your future at all. It's just about not living there yet because you're not there yet. Um, I agree with that. I think there's a couple things that I want to talk about that, that... Because I used to get kind of tripped up on this one myself, like with manifesting goals, dreams, that kind of thing, right? Like I've always learned and felt like you should have a goal yeah, and then or a dream and then you should have a plan to get there Mm -hmm. and then you got to do the footwork. Yes. So but then stumbling upon like Dolores Cannon books and getting into some of the more kind of heavy duty thought provoking books that she has, like The Convoluted Universe, Mm -hmm. they're much different than like um, Life After Death or In Between Lives and whatever the title is. I'm (laughs) sorry, Dolores. Um, But so these Convoluted Universe volumes are much deeper thinking and they get into a point where they start talking about if you are essentially guiding yourself like from the other side and you want it, like you will it. It will be. Yeah. So wasting all your time on yeah. goals and dreams and this um, is sort of, I don't want to say counterproductive, but not necessary. Right. The way that I felt that they put it in the book was like, if if this is really what you want and it's the mm-hmm. plan, it's what you've done, right. like what the contract you've signed when you came into this life before, mm-hmm. it's going to be. Right. If it's not meant to be, well, then you're wasting your time. Right. So that part you need to be able to decipher within yourself. Is this what I'm really supposed to be doing? Yeah. You know, is this really the goal? Yeah. And what would the plan be for that? Because otherwise you probably are wasting your time. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think that this is really more about um, living in every moment when Mm -hmm. you're thinking about those things as well. but. Yeah, I agree. And I've played around with the manifestation thing. And the thing is, is that divine timing plays a big part in that. Mm -hmm. And so you can sit here and manifest and and all of that. But if it's not the right timing, it's not going to happen. So a lot of us have a tendency to to live in that future moment Mm -hmm. instead of living in this moment. Yes. That was the other part I want to talk about, too, is yes, I totally agree with that. That when we go out, we're doing something. I'm not thinking about, oh, gee, I wish I could be at home painting my picture. (laughs) Right. Um, or mixing that song. Now, when we do go out, because I like photography, it does put me a lot in the right here, right now yeah. moment. Like, I'm very aware of everything around me. Right. And so, as I'm soaking it up, you might be talking to me or something, and I'm not not engaging with you, but right. there's a part of my mind that's going, ooh, look at that angle over there. Right. 
you know, yeah. or I need to get closer to that thing. Yeah. So I could take a picture of it. But I think it's still living in the moment. It's living in the moment. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not letting it like where I'm like, huh, what'd you say? Right. You know, I'm not doing that. Right. Um, but it's just that part does make me, I realize, but when you're doing photography, it really does make you kind of very in the moment yeah. and appreciating everything that's around you. Yeah. So my senses are kind of taking that all in, I guess, yes. at that time. Absolutely. And it's funny because since you've started doing that more, I will see things and be like, ooh, that'd be a great picture. You know, it's like yeah. your mind starts to work like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. yeah. So I hope that answers your question, Katie. Thanks, Katie. A little better, yeah. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about before we give our info and all that is we had a, a listener that asked us a question a while back. Nancy, she asked us if we left California because all of the stuff we, oh, that we knew that there were yeah. going to be things that were coming. Yeah. And so I kind of wanted to address that because <laughs> the things that we saw coming um, yeah. are happening. And uh -huh. there was an earthquake yesterday, 4.7. <laughs> it was... It's, some people say five miles, some are saying eight miles from where we lived. Yeah. Um, it, there wasn't any damage or anything, probably, but it's a smaller earthquake, but it's still not fun. Right. Nobody really wants to live in that all the time. No. And the weather there, the flooding, the, the everything has been absolutely crazy. And there was a point when we were going through all of the, the time trying to find a house and it just wasn't working, right. where we were both like, is this really what we're supposed to be doing? And I said to my mom a few times, well, maybe we just stay here in California. And she was like, you got to go. You got to go. Yeah, there was this sense of urgency, urgency. of mm -hmm. getting away from there. Yep. My first thought was fires because we live close to a canyon that's yeah. like um, good for hiking. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's connected to, I think, adjacent is Malibu, I mean, Wildwood connected to La Branca at all? I don't know. Uh, anyways, they're very sure. close together. Yeah. And they're very large, um, kind yeah. of sunken in areas that you can hike, and but full of brush. <laughs> yeah, never burn. And burned. I was like, never burn. And I'm like, man, I'm feeling really nervous. And our house is very close to Wildwood. Yeah. I'm like, cross the street from it. Yeah. So <clears throat> the issue with the rains, though, yeah, the house that we were renting Wonderful property. <laughs> um, but the roof was awful. Yeah. The and I remember too. when we were leaving and they came to do the walkthrough, uh, the owner and her daughter. Mm -hmm. And the first thing the daughter said when she got out of the car and looked up, she goes, what's with the fuzzy roof? Yeah. Mm, <laughs> that's because you guys haven't like, changed the roof. <laughs> that's like, you know, when your tires start to show the radial because they're wearing down. Yeah. That's the same thing going on up there. <laughs> and the backyard, like the 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 plumbing in this place was so old because these are homes oh, yeah. that were built in the 60s yeah. that there was a tree growing out of one of the drainage pipes in the backyard. Yeah. So when it would rain, it would just flood the backyard yeah. and, and it was horrible. So and my, the gardeners wouldn't trim it. No, they, they just didn't kept growing, anything. getting bigger, yeah. getting bigger. I was like, what's going on? One of the things that I've really learned, and I think this is important to point out, is that sometimes when I would get those messages, I go to worst case scenario yeah. a lot of times. So my thought is, we got to get out of here before the house burns down or it comes crumbling down in an earthquake, which isn't necessarily the case. Okay? No, I was also thinking on the level of if the which was my point about the roof is that if that's leaking enough and you're not aware of it, right? It's producing a mold. Yes. That again, you may not be aware of. It's not just that. It's like. The last storm that they had, I know the power ran out in some places and right. stuff like that. And that's a huge inconvenience. I can't tell you how many times we lost power in Southern California for days. There was yeah. one time that it was over a day on Thanksgiving. Like, I know. Just It horrible. happened in the following year on Christmas or yep. something. It was like, mm -hmm. what are they doing? It was horrible. So even though my mind went to worst case scenario, I think our, that the guides were just saying to us, no, you need to go because it's going to be a lot less stressful for you. You're not going to have to deal with these kinds of things. Of course, in life, there's always things that you have to deal with, but I don't want to deal with all that. I really didn't. No. And so it was definitely something that pushed us out. Um, not like we were trying to run away because we, you're going to have monsoons here and flash floods. And, and it's hot. It's hot. Yeah. I mean, well, it gets hot. It's not hot right now. Yeah. But... It's beautiful right now. Yeah. I'm loving it. But yeah, during the summer, I'll probably hate it here. But there is a lot of, yeah, I think yeah. natural occurrences that don't happen as much here. Now, yeah. there's faults that run through here and yeah. very well could have an earthquake, but they are not typical around here. No. Well, and you know what's weird is that with global warming, we're starting to see some really <clears throat> strange changes. Like Wisconsin had their first yeah. ever tornado. Ever yeah. tornado. 
on record. First yep. one. Wow. Exactly. That's weird. Yeah, in Cal- or San Diego, half yep. the houses were underwater there, it seemed like. Was, they had a tornado, oh, too. Did mm-hmm. they? Yeah. Wow. So things are really changing. So, mm-hmm. you know, we might not be as safe here as we think we are. I think that we're more content right. when it comes to this kind of stuff. You know, the backyard during all the rain we've had here, it didn't flood. It was just not right. as stressful as that. And so sometimes right. I feel like our guides are just trying to help us to live a more happy life. It's not necessarily about worst case scenario. You're going to die. Your house is going to burn down. Whatever, the, you know, the, the concerns are. Right. It's just about making your life better, more yeah. more convenient. Yeah. Happier. I agree. Yeah. So anyways, just want to talk about that for a minute. So let's go ahead and give our info before we start okay. the episode. So you can find me at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. I have a TV show that airs every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific time yeah. called Beyond the Bridge. It's on Bold Brave TV. You can find that on my website. I've added a new class to my regimen. Molly was on last week, which was really oh, good. Yeah, Molly was on. Was gonna, I'm going to talk about that one. Molly, start. sorry. But um, I have a new class that I've started. It's a manifestation class. Or not manifestation, meditation. So what I'm going to be doing is just a half hour class and I'm going to be teaching my method of meditation. Not what people might learn when they go online, but what has worked for me. Because I think that that might help people that are having a hard time. So the class is only $20. It's next Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. You can go on my website and sign up for it there. Very cool. Hey. And then for you. Yes, djonesartcollection.com for the web at djones collect art collections, excuse me, for TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And for my photography, Etsy shop, djones photography 71. And for my Instagram page, photography, djones 71 photography. That's it for me. Very good. All right, folks. Um, episode 239 Conscious Living. So I like that you brought up Mystic Molly because that's actually what got me thinking about this episode. Oh, okay. When I had Molly on my TV <clears throat> show this last week, we started talking about things about this, about what is actually going on in our world that we don't pay any kind of attention to at all a lot of times until the spiritual awakening. Mm-hmm. How we act, how we treat others, what we put in our body, what what we breathe, what we use our products. There are so many things that we don't pay any attention to because we're living in this kind of unconscious state. Mm -hmm. So conscious living is about taking control of it. It's, and it does go with living in the moment. It's kind of the next step. Yes, it does. Yeah. But a little bit about what living consciously is. It's not an instant switch. Okay. You can't just all of a sudden one day be living consciously. It takes time. It's about, retraining your brain it's a lifestyle yeah. really yes. sometimes an art <laughs> it's about being aware and deliberate of everything that we do yeah. making mindful choices instead of acting without thought um it sounds really straightforward but more people than not don't practice have this. a hard time doing it absolutely yeah i mean i could think you know <laughs> there's probably many people it takes a lot of therapy just to let go of the past and if you're living in the past yes how can you be consciously living and, you know, or living consciously for the moment. Yes. Um, and then if you're obsessed, let's say you're a workaholic, you're obsessed with, you know, that next paycheck, that next yeah. big thing, you're kind of two steps away from the moment. You're further down the road. Yes. And that alone can take you out of the moment. Yes. And a lot of people coast on autopilot, too, where it's like the same routine every day. And, you know, you go to work, you come home, you cook dinner, take care of the kids, the pets, whatever. You go to bed, you start all over again. And there's no stopping and thinking about, am I really happy doing this? Like when I was looking online and going through research of, of what, you know, some of the websites had to say, that was something that they all of them seemed to point out. And that was are you happy with what you're doing? Yeah. Because if you're not, you're not living consciously. Yeah. You're just going with the flow and going with autopilot instead of actually participating in your future and your. I was trying existence. to remember where that was. I was, and I shared this with you recently that I was read something or something about. I don't know if it was some other medium that was sharing this about the spirits that they connected with that said what was the one thing that. Mm you wish you would have done differently in that life. Yeah. And most of them said, live in the moment. Yep. The, a lot of them also said like, you not be afraid 
to mm. take chances. Yep. But, and I think I heard a lot of them say like, not work as much yep. and enjoy my family. That to me is like conscious living. It's being right here, right now. Yes, that's exactly right. And it's not easy to do. And yeah. changing yourself to do that isn't, it isn't easy. Yeah. It does require intentional effort, which also requires examining yourself and how you, you know, you're reacting to things yeah. and being honest with yourself. And right. that can be really hard to do sometimes, but yeah. it really is worth it. Living more consciously is also about being mindful of the choices you make and how they affect your own well-being and the well-being of others, as well as the well-being of the planet. Right. It's about questioning your actions and aligning them with your personal beliefs. Right. Yeah. So like I do every week, I did some polls for our listeners. I asked them, are you living your life without a clear sense of purpose or direction? And 42% said yes. Wow. Yeah. 19% said no. 28% said a little and 9% said, I'm not sure. And you know what? I, I kind of understand because I've been at those points in my life where uh -huh. it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to do what I have to do right. and this is what it's going to be mm -hmm. and it's never going to change or get better. But the thing is, is like my life is more than half over now and I'm like, nah, right. that's not working. That didn't work in the first half of my life. And so I can't do that going forward. We become a, like, I feel like we think we're, um, backed into a corner and have no choice in a lot of those situations in our yeah. lives. Like if it's, you know, how do I, even if I knew my purpose, how would I do that? Right. Because I have to pay my bills, you know, and I have to do this and I have to pay that and I have to go there. And, and so this job that I have, even though it makes me miserable, it pays for all those things. Right. Okay. That is a good thing that you can't argue with that. Right. Okay. So it's, it's providing you something. Yeah. But where's the priority here? Right. What is the priority here? Right. Meaning what's most important? Your happiness, your overall kind of mental and psychological well-being, or the stature you desire to be at? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that could be, you know, a bigger house and a bigger car as opposed to a smaller house and a, least, a you know a less expensive car. Right. Um, so those are all kind of examples. Um, but again, if you want it, there's a way yes. to change. I wrote that down here where there's a will, there's a way. Yes. If you want it, if you yeah. really want it, and it's it's within reason and kind of within scope of what you're supposed to be doing here, mm -hmm. because believe it or not, you do have a purpose. Yeah. You really do. Yeah. You came here having already made that contract about what your purpose was. Yep. It's up to you to tap into you yep. to figure that out. And I'm grateful that I've known that very young age that yeah. I'm supposed to be creative and just kind of constantly deflecting yeah. the naysayers and just, meh, 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 you know, yeah. and in some way I'm considered the black sheep because I won't conform that happens, yeah. to everybody else's way. Like, ah, you didn't do the military thing. Yeah. You didn't do the corporate thing. Your boxers hung out longer than your shorts. Your hair was in your, <laughs> over your eyes. You know, like I just didn't yeah. do it that way. No. Um, I tried it that way for a long time, yeah. but it didn't do anything for my sort of conscious living yeah. because I was striving. You know what I mean? I was two months ahead of the game. Yeah, totally. And, and stressing about, you know, not stressing, stressing about the future, but sort of, um, hurt by the past. Yeah, Totally. No, I get that for sure. As opposed to being like, I'm right here with my kid. Yep. You know, or I'm with you. Yeah. And we're doing whatever. Yeah. I'm trying to get that more into my scope of vision. Yes. For the moment. Absolutely. Let me read a couple of these comments. <clears throat> Jennifer said, I know I'm a wife and a mother and I have a job, but I'm not clear on what my larger purpose is right now. What does God want me to contribute to humanity? What are my gifts? Mm. And then Amy said, I so relate to this and feel the exact same way. I feel like I have a bigger purpose, but what is it? Right. It That is a challenge to yep. figure it out. I didn't know mine either right. until I was 
40 something. And it could be to both these ladies. It could be something very um in the forefront of your mind, but you're not yeah. equating that with success and career and happiness yes. and um not just that, but helping. Yes, exactly. Helping. Mm-hmm. If you're doing something that is helping your fellow man, mm-hmm. chances are that is going to come to fruition much quicker than something that is f- mainly for your own gain. Yeah, absolutely. And then Melissa said, I've just been winging it, but it seems to be working out okay. I have no idea what my actual purpose is, but I must be doing something right. (laughs) That's cool. There's nothing wrong with winging it at all. Uh -uh. As long as you're looking at it, you know. Right. And you're not just autopilot. Autopilot is something totally different because you will miss a lot of opportunities if you're just on autopilot. Every yeah. Day. Plus, the, what kind of life is that if every day is exactly the same? We're not meant to live like that. No. Winging it's fine. <clears throat> um, faking it till you make it. Great. Yeah. As long as you're being honest and upfront about where you're at. Yeah. You know, you can't go tell somebody. Oh, I know how to work on jet engines, <laughs> and you don't have a clue, right? You know, then obviously you're you're shooting yourself in the foot to begin with. Mm-hmm. So it's got to be within reason, within your particular maybe skill set, scope. But anything that you see other people do that you admire, yeah, you can learn how to do that. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. There has to be work, mm-hmm. just like anything. To learn something, we have to work. Yep. Now that means read up. You know. Watch videos, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's There's it's mind-numbing work. sometimes. I'm mm-hmm. not going to lie. But it gets you somewhere. Yep. There's a lot of work involved. Mm-hmm. I mentioned to you a few days ago or whatever that um, I, I love my job, but if it wasn't lucrative and I had to get another job, I would still do this one and work my ass off to get where I need to go. Because, like, a lot of people, they'll be like, I don't have the time for this. Yeah. Okay. I have to work another job. I can't put time into my purpose. It's just not going to happen. But the thing is, is there's 24 hours in a day. Mm-hmm. And I know that we have a lot of responsibilities. A lot of people have kids and, and stuff that they need to deal with. However, making excuses is definitely not going to get us anywhere. No. And most of the time, that's what it is. Right. I do it myself. So I'm not lecturing. I mean, I can sit there and be like, God, I have so much to do and then find myself just scrolling through TikTok. Oh, you know? know, And it's like, okay, well, maybe if I would just do what I need to do. Yeah. You know? So we have to make that effort and consciously say, I want this and I'm going after it no matter what that means. And the truth is when we're is. in the process of doing that and that's kind of got our focus – We feel good about ourselves Mm -hmm. because not because we're putting work into something, because we believe in something. Yes. That's what really makes us feel good is that somewhere, somehow, there is this belief. Right. Right? You're putting like, um, I don't want to say all your eggs in one basket, but you're rolling the dice. You're going for it. You're excited. You've got like this vision. And that's kind of, you know, in some strange way, you're going to have to make a sacrifice in anything. Like yeah. if you're in a position like some of these people sharing that I don't know what my purpose is, but I'm I'm here in this particular state in this city uh, working this job and I'm not sure if this is my forever. Right. Well, it doesn't have to be. Right. You see, you don't have to have anybody come along and answer that question for you. Yep. You can answer it. Yep. But you're going to have to seek, search, learn, and produce. Yep. And, and it happens. Mm-hmm. It really does. You Belief is a big part of it, too. Belief is a huge part of it. Yep. I got to share something because this is a big part for me. I think um, we talk a lot about everything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we do. Seriously. <laughs> and don't there's we talk about? 239 episodes <laughs> to show that. Yeah. Um, but we get really excited about certain, about a lot of this. Yeah. And that's why we want to share this. Mm-hmm. That's why we do this. Mm-hmm. Um, at the sake of, at the risk of, excuse me, maybe being considered crazy by your friends, family, and who, strangers. Absolutely. And not all of them, but some of them. Yeah. But at the risk to share this information with other people to see, do they get excited as excited as you and I right. get? And I forget this sometimes. So 
I, um, let me take a, a opportunity here to apologize. If anybody ever feels like we're preaching or evangelizing yeah. something, because we're not. No, definitely not. Uh, we don't have a religion to do that or an no. idol to do that for. No. We are excited and we can't believe how astounding that this universe is in the way they show us and communicate with us. Yeah. And so when you're feeling lost and lonely, and about five years ago, both of us were sitting in our kitchen, not sure what the hell to do with our lives. Yeah. All right? Yeah, it's true. And it was a scary place. It was scary. Um, And all of a sudden, it all started coming. Yeah. And it hasn't stopped. I get so excited, like, especially with the synchronicities and the numbers. <laughs> yeah. I, I share this with people, like, mm-hmm. and I don't, like, my parents over the last yeah. couple of days, I was talking <laughs> to them about, like, the license plates, and, and I've shared a lot of things with synchronicities with them, and they just kind of, okay. Right. Now, I get they're older, you know, so, and definitely a different generation. Yeah. But the bottom line is, is I don't know, maybe it's... um. You know, it's weird to have somebody talk about the other side when you're older stage in life right. than the person that's talking to you. Yeah. I'm not talking in a sense of, like, death. Right. I'm talking about how amazing the other side is and that we have nothing to fear. Right. Because there's only one place to go. Right. And it's so incredibly amazing that they're talking to us from the other yeah. side. Right. And then so you came out up today and shared that you had a reading with somebody that I knew. Yeah. From high school. Uh-huh. And I was like, no way. <laughs> like, this is so cool. Yeah. That this person now says, I'm seeing these numbers. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah, it is. You know, and I didn't know this was going to happen. I couldn't have walked up to that person in high school and said, hey, guess what? In like 30, 40 years, we're going to like cross paths again because we're like seeing weird numbers. <laughs> she would have been like, whoa, what? Yeah, like, yeah, she would have been like, go away. <laughs> And put your boxers back up in your shorts. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, funny. That was only gym class, probably. But. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, so it's just, it's exciting. Yeah, It's it hard is. not to get excited. Yeah. And like we just said was, it's the belief. Mm-hmm. The belief. And this goes with, this is the kind of the common thread that runs through almost every religion mm-hmm. that you can think of is belief. Yes. Belief. Mm-hmm. Faith, yeah. So what is that? Right. Why is that a prominent aspect of anything that you consider your religion or you worship or you believe in? Yeah. Why is that yeah. the number one yeah. thing that you hear? Yeah. If you were to ask me, is because I believe that, like anything, you know, since the dawn of time... When we got here, or however we got here, there wasn't skyscrapers, there wasn't cell phones, there wasn't technology, there wasn't even buildings. It was all based on thought and belief. Yeah. Thought that you could imagine something like that and believe that you could actually create it. Yeah. That's it, man. Yep. It's all based on belief. Yep. A vision and belief. So that's when I kind of sort of wash push away with like a broom all uh-huh. the religion and i go let's get past all this yeah hoopla and let's talk about what the core thing is here and that is the belief right that you can and you will so if you don't know what your calling is you will figure it out yeah and you can achieve it but you have to believe that yeah so when you get into the mode like what samantha's saying is like you're not, then you're not awake. Right. So you've shut down, the mm-hmm. doors are closed, lights are off, and you're on what you just said, autopilot. Right. And you're just going through the motions. Yep. So you get up to go to work, you pass the same monuments, yep. the same st- signs, and you notice the same things and you see the same faces when you get into work. <laughs> you're not noticing anything different. Totally. Anything new. Yeah. Start looking for that, Mm -hmm. and that's going to guide you to what it is you're supposed to do. Absolutely. There's small things that you can do in there, too. Like Mm -hmm. if you take the same route to work every day, take another route. Take a different route. Yeah, it's just enjoying new things. You might see a different sign that says something that you go, that sounds interesting. Totally. But so many people are just set in that, you know, 
what they do. It's just their routine. And I go here and I don't even pay attention. And a lot of people, you know, you get to work and how did I get here? Because I wasn't even p- paying attention to how I got here. You right. know, I'm just not living. I'm on autopilot. Yeah. You know, but there's a lot more that this actually goes with. So let's talk about it. Yeah. There's many areas of our life where living consciously is important. Our thoughts and beliefs are a huge one because that shapes our life. Yeah. Really. Beliefs about ourselves, others, politics, the media, the world. These beliefs are both good and bad, right? But this is what makes us us. So we have to be conscious of what our beliefs are and believe those things and not, you know, I I, I think that there's a lot of people that want to believe what they want to believe, but they're afraid to. Right. Like there might be a lot of people that see our stuff and go, I want to learn more and I want to know more, but I'm afraid of what I might find out, what other people might think of me. And at the beginning of the spiritual journey, I was one of those. I didn't want anybody to know that I was a psychic or, right. or any of that. Yeah. But when you start to really believe in something, you start to care less about what the other people think. And now it's like, okay, well, if you don't like what I do, right. then that's okay. We can go our separate ways. Mm-hmm. And that's the difference between like your friends and family and your tribe. Right. Okay. Your friends and family that, you know, the people that you've known all your life, gone to school with, work with, whatever – they might not be your tribe. Your tribe might be those people that totally understand, yeah. like what you were saying about the girl from high school. Right. She gets it, you know, where other people would be like, oh, yeah, okay, you're not crazy or anything. But you know, it's funny. You said you shared with us, uh, you may have said this on here, but you shared with me that you were going through old stuff and found something where you said, your dream job yeah. would be like an animal communicator or like a healer, yeah. right? Uh huh. Well, look at that. Yeah. Okay. So look weird. at look at that. You're now not by everybody. Yeah. But you're now being perceived as how you wanted to be perceived. Yes. Okay. I've done art and music for many many years. Okay. Yeah. I pushed the music much more than I pushed the art, and 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 now looking in hindsight, is music was never not successful. It right. was I didn't make millions of dollars. I wasn't famous. But my music has been heard. Right. Which it's makes it It's been shared. And it's mm-hmm. been that level. It's been successful. Yes. But I wasn't paying attention to my art, mm-hmm. especially like like I remember my first marriage. I She liked to take photography. Mm-hmm. And when I would do it, it bothered her because <laughs> mine would be better. Right. And I wasn't intentionally right. doing that. But I could just see things. I have a an yeah. artistic eye. Yeah. So, but now I'm looking at this, you know, going back to when I really wasn't even sharing that I did these paintings to now I'm being perceived how I wished to be perceived. Totally. Yep. Right. Because you worked to get there. I did. Yep. But it was a vision and a belief of, okay, well, I can't just put one picture up and go, that's it. Right. (laughs) That makes me And then you have everybody convinced. (laughs) Right. No, people want to see and hear your journey. Yeah, they do. Just like we're sharing with you here. Yeah. People want to see the evolution. They want to see the next thing. Yeah. Um, and know that you're genuinely who you are. Yes. Not a flash in a pan or you're pretending to be something you're not. Right. Um, those types of things. So, but it took some heavy kind of... Yeah. Well, it took a spiritual awakening. Yeah, it did, yeah. And we all know that that's not it is wonderful as it is, it's not always a walk in the park. Not at all. Yeah. But it is wonderful. Yes. And I'm so grateful that something came along whoever it was or whatever that p- p- specific moment was um and it could be a combination of a couple moments. Thank you, you know. Yes. To whomever and the universe was responsible for that. Yes. Because it woke me up and now I cannot unsee it. And I can't, um, I can no longer be a jerk without a conscience. Right. Totally. You know? Yeah. I can't do those things. Not that I walked around being a jerk, but I'm sure I was a jerk to people at times. Yeah. I don't do that without regret or compassion. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, this is all taken in consideration now because I'm looking at it that, wow, you're like so like you're me, right? Yeah, and I'm you. Yeah, 
So why are we keep treating each other like shit? Totally. Yep. Well, when we stop doing that, the world will change. That's right. But we don't view that. Most of us don't view the world this way. Yeah. We look at it, this is me, my individuality, damn it, mm-hmm. and my little space of earth. <laughs> yes. Stay away. Exactly. That's a lot of people's mentality. Yes, it is. And that's the world they will live in. Yes. But those of you, just because you see other people doing this, that won't be the world you live in. Totally. If you choose not to. Yes. So the conscious living really helps us to get to that fifth dimension sort of. Um, not the fifth dimension, but you know what I mean. Like it does, though. Closer to the fifth dimension. Yeah, for sure. That sense of compassion, love, understanding, yes. peace, and treating your brother and your sister like they were a family member or you yourself. Yes. Um, is going to bring a higher state of consciousness to the overall globe. And also raise your consciousness, not just to a more divine level, but you'll appreciate every moment that's passing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we realize that much more as we get older, right? Yes, we do. Um, Because we realize time is running out. Yes. So we become much more of like, hold on to those moments. Yes. And that's why the old people have been telling us that forever. Exactly. Okay? There's certain yep. things that get passed down and down and down and down for a reason. And nobody listens, though. It's for us to listen. <laughs> yeah, yes. we don't. So if you have children, yeah. enjoy them while yeah. they're little. Yeah. Because mine's all grown up, yeah. you know? Like, and so the days of swaddling and cuddling and kissing and, and being their protector when they were scared of the big monster on the TV. Yeah. That's gone. Yes. You know? Something that I want to point out about things like this is that you wouldn't want to stay in that place forever, no. would you? Right. So we're the our lives have to evolve. Yes. And a lot of times when it comes to this conscious living, people do not, they, they don't want to evolve, right? No. So there's no change. You think no. that what you're going to want today is what you're going to want two years from now. And yeah. I'll give you an example. When we first moved into the house in Thousand Oaks that I loved so much when we first moved in there, yeah. I would make myself upset going, because I knew we were going to move here, you know? I don't want to move. I'm happy here. I always want to stay in this house. Can't we buy this house? Like, that was me when we first moved in. I'd wake up in the middle of the night and, like, go to the bathroom and be like, I don't want to ever leave here. I love this, right? I was ready to leave. I was ready to leave when it was time. Yeah. But And to move on for a lot of reasons. But what, But I didn't see it that way at first. And so I was making myself miserable at first, right? So now we're here. And I'm looking at things completely different as right now, I'm really happy. That doesn't mean that I want to be here forever. It just means that right now I'm happy. So like this morning I woke up and there's all this snow outside in the mountains behind our house. And I'm like, oh my God, look at that. I'm so happy, so happy. But I won't do that again. I won't go, I never want this to end. I always want to be here because I know that's not the case. I know that I'm going to change and I'm going to evolve and I'm going to want to see other things and and go other places. So we have to not beat ourselves up in those instances or like live in the future going back to that. Really, it's about really paying attention to where you are now, but also working for the future, you know, whatever that might be. I agree. I think for me, moving here um, did a couple things for me. It showed me a different type of life. But it also put me in a position to enjoy this. Yeah. Because now I feel like I kind of got over that hurdle of, oh, I got to actually move somewhere right. different for the first time. Um, besides back and forth when some of my parents were divorced, but I was in the same state. Um, but this has taught me now, like, to really enjoy it while while we're here because I do know, like, this isn't where yeah. we'll be forever. Exactly. And I guess I, for some reason, I thought maybe in California I'd be there forever. Yeah. So it's hard sometimes you get stuck in the, like, I've seen this, I've done this. I'm right. Gonna, you know, I'm like living in the moment. I'm like, I'm sick of this. Yeah. But now, <laughs> now it's more like um, – just enjoying it. Yeah, totally. And because I realized this is just a different chapter. Yes. And we're here to make some things happen and enjoy it for what it is. Yes. And then we're going to experience something else different later. Exactly. And that's conscious living. Yeah. As as well as living in the moment and enjoying what you're experiencing now 
instead of being like, I got to have this or, you know, this can never change. It can't change. Well, you're going to want it to change. The minute you say that, that's when things start to change. Yes. So don't ask them. What's next? <laughs> What's it going to be next? Don't ask that question. Yeah, don't and don't say, <clears throat> I can't take any more of this. Don't say that either. No, don't say any of those things. Because, you know, they're going... <laughs> Challenge accepted. You're so dumb. Yeah, you, you can handle this. You humans are so yeah. dumb that you don't realize you've been doing this for ever. Yes. And you think you can't take it. Yeah. And then you have this moment of what you call death. Yeah. And you realize you've taken it all and you're still... You. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All right. Let's talk some more about these things that um, areas of our lives where conscious living is important. Our choices. Uh, What do you say yes to? What do you say no to? Do you break the law or do you follow it? Do you go with your morals or do you go against them? Are you considerate or are you rude? What will you focus on today? Will you eat healthy today? All of these things uh-huh. are about your conscious living, your choices, you're paying attention to what's going on. Yeah. Very important. It's really important, and this is something I've really started working on, is being conscious during your activities. Soaking up whatever it is that you're doing instead of being in a different place. Yes. Like, I don't typically read a lot because I feel like I go, ooh, my mind goes out yeah. the window when I read. And that's one of the examples that I saw online was reading. Because it is a hard one to focus on. So it it might be one to practice with, with reading and staying in that. And when you can't stay in that, taking a break, instead of letting your mind wander while you're sitting there going over the the words but not actually absorbing any of it. Some of the other suggestions for things to be conscious during... it's conversations with others, not thinking about what you're going to say while the other person is talking. Or wandering off to a different place. Exactly. Yeah. During your food that you're eating. This is a part I have a problem with because I eat really fast. I don't enjoy my food. I'm like, this is so good. I want it right now. But if I just slowed down a little bit, I'd probably enjoy it I'm like, more. can you have me the salt? But- oh, you're done? <laughs> no, he's not lying. We're so opposite in some of these ways where it's like... Oh, man, you and your sister, all you guys are just like, what? all of us are. You think you would raised by like a herd of cattle. Like... Yeah, I know. Everybody's running for the trough. (laughs) And my brother and sister, they're half, you know, but they're not even related and we're all the same way. So it's so funny. You guys are ready to go and I'm just like halfway, just finished my salad. But even other things like cleaning, driving, cooking, having sex, showering, walking the dog. I see so many people walking their dogs and they're on their phone. They're texting while they're walking their dog. Well, maybe you should just enjoy the walk with your dog. Pay attention to what they're doing instead of dragging them behind you because you want to text and walk. And I, again, I'm not innocent here. I used to be a pet sitter and it was like, this was yeah. my job. So I, the dog needs exercise. Okay, but I'll be on my phone. And now I look back and I'm like, I wish I would have put more effort into, you know, spending time with the animals themselves instead of being on my phone while I was, yeah. you know, taking care of them. Live and learn. Absolutely. That's what all of this is about. And when it really comes down to it, it's about learning and then changing it. Because if you learn and you sit there in your head and you're like, okay, I get it, but I'm not making any changes in it, then what's the use? What's the purpose? You know? So a few tips on how to live more consciously. Okay. So why don't, here's a good like practice. Okay. Pick two things that you do every day where you know that you're genuinely like, like, less conscious right like for me i think it's cooking probably because i'll just cook and then i'll be done i'm like oh who cooked that meal i did i wasn't paying attention to what i was doing but i cooked it Uh um you know things like that pick whatever your activities are showering driving to work working out whatever and then over the next week purposefully bring consciousness to those uneventful activities right because by practicing being in the present right. during those activities you're expanding yeah. your consciousness you're yeah. teaching yourself how to do this with everything with everyday right. life it's i guess what and you bring up a good point is that you're expanding your consciousness if anything you're kind of you're sweeping the crap out of the room that's yeah. taking up the space totally because information can come in. So like you said something last week, I believe, or was, I think it was last week, which I used to do too, was just like having arguments in the shower yeah. with yeah. Pe- fake arguments. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't and I'm realizing, that? you know, and then you kind of like, you get through your shower and you're like, oh, did I remember to uh, 
did I remember to use the thing on my feet? Right. You know, or did yeah. I remember? You're like, you're like, like oh, I'm not here. Totally. I was totally. like fully immersed in this argument yeah. with this person that has no idea that I'm having an argument with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my Only my soap, my shampoo and conditioner yeah. know about this. Yeah, totally. Um, so once that stopped, even that was a good exercise for me was mm-hmm. to like learn how to, then I'm actually just... In the moment of like, oh, the, sh- the water feels so good. Yes, totally. You know, and we think to ourselves, well, that's a waste of our time no, and our not. mental capacity nope. to just sit there and enjoy and ponder the warm water no, and how not. the soap feels running down your back. Why? I did that today. It was fabulous. Why is that? Yeah. You know, it's like that's what we should be doing because we'll devote the other time for that when that time comes. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Some other areas of our lives that we should look at the conscious type stuff is um, with eating. This is a big one. Yeah. And I'm not perfect with this. So again, not lecturing. But this is something that Mystic Molly and I were talking about is that I went through most of my life not really thinking about what I was eating, not caring. I ate a lot of fast food and I drank a lot of soda. And I look back and I go, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Can't go back and change it, right? Now the only thing that I can do is pay attention to what I'm eating now. Be more conscious about my decisions. Am I always going to do that? No. I made a charcuterie board four nights ago. I'm still suffering for it, okay? (laughs) So you have to listen to your body. And that's another thing is listening to your body and what it tells you. Because I suffered from migraines for many, many years. I now take a preventative. But looking back, I realized most of those migraines were caused by things I did. Because I didn't pay attention to my own health. I didn't pay attention to the triggers. Right. And now I do. Now I know that eating all that cheese is usually not worth it and I shouldn't do it. You know, mm-hmm. it, as fabulous as it is, I know how it makes my body feel. So being in that and saying, I don't really want to feel that way. I want to feel better. Then you're taking more control of your life. Right. You were reading something about food, which do a whole episode on this one time, but about how in other countries, there are chemicals that they use in our food here that are illegal in other countries. Yeah. I read that recently too. It's like, like the food coloring. Right. Yeah. That. Yeah. We, what was the example I showed you it was Sunny D? Yeah. That was one of them. Uh, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just the difference just, between yep. the UK Sunny D and America's Sunny D. Yeah. First of all, the labels looks totally different, uh, but the color yeah. looks Totally different. Totally different. And yeah. they don't use colored dye. They use things like carrots, yep. like to get the orange look. Right. Um, so, yeah. And I thought, well, maybe some people would consider this Big Brother or New World Order, but why isn't there a global right. sort of presence in, yeah. I guess, if you want to call it policing, what junk is put into processed food? Absolutely. it's It really is horrible. Like, when... COVID happened when we were only eating at home and I was just doing all the grocery shopping. We ate nothing but organic foods, yeah. nothing but free, free fed animals, whether it was the cows or the chickens or whatever, they were all, you know, it wasn't like KFC stuff, like that kind of thing where it's right. mass produced. And I felt better and I lost weight. And then like, as we came out of that and I started adding junk back into my diet, I started feeling bad again. Yeah. But it's like, sometimes the food just tastes so good that we <laughs> just do it, right? Yeah. Okay, well, every once in a while is fine. That's not a big deal. It's when we do it every day yeah. that we need to be more conscious. Read the labels, look at what kind of food coloring is in there. We went to the M&M factory recently and they have every color M&M that you can possibly imagine. And I was right. looking at those going, the only difference is the color. And that's done by dye. Yeah. And when you drive like out here, there's like the USA food plant. And oh, yeah. There was the a food plant, coloring that stinks. Food coloring, oh, my god. And it gosh. smells like. It smells horrific. Come on. It smells like death, but we're putting this in our body. Why? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it does knock out a lot of foods that we might like and are fun to eat. But at the yeah. same time, they're not good for our body. So no. paying attention to that, paying attention to what makes our bodies feel good. I never wanted to be a pain in anyone's butt, and so I pretty much just 
like went with my allergies and my issues and didn't try and make myself feel better because I didn't want to be a problem. But now I'm older and I realize I don't want to feel like that. Right. And I'm not going to, you know, I usually will keep it to myself. I don't, everybody doesn't have to know. But at the same time, it's like, I'm not just going to follow the crowd or do what people want me to do when it, I don't feel well <clears throat> doing that. Yeah. It, it, it really is about yourself and about, you know, what feels good to you and what's right, not what other people are doing, you know? Yep. But and also about how we take care of the planet, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. recycling, anything like that, that we're doing to pay more attention to the planet. It's like how many times do you see people just throw things out the window? Well, this is another thing that whatever, I shared with you, you know? too. Um, that's I know this is off. We're kind of off topic here a little bit. But since you brought it up <laughs> um, that I saw on I Love Science uh, page that now nanoplastics. Mm-hmm. have been uh, discovered in bottled water. Yeah, great. Fabulous. So they're everywhere. Yeah. You know, the garbage, great garbage patch is just one example right. of it. But that's a terribly big example of it. Yeah. Because it's getting so small, the pieces become almost granule, small, and yep. then liquefied to where... Fish are ingesting it, exactly, and then the fish are fished and caught and then ingested by us, and guess what? Yep. That's exactly what I was going to say, is that, like, seafood off the coast of California, I don't Mm. want it. Mm. I don't want it, because God only knows what's in that ocean. There was, you know, the earthquake in Japan that caused um, the, the, what do you call it, the nuclear plant, all that stuff went into the ocean. What are we eating? We're eating these fish and crab and lobster and whatever else that have been eating the junk out of the ocean that we're throwing in there and we're making ourselves sick. And we wonder why we are not intelligent <laughs> enough to get off this planet and yeah. discover the rest of the universe. We wonder. Yep. And you know what? I didn't think about any of this until the spiritual awakening. And yeah. so I know that there's so many people that are just walking around completely oblivious. Yeah. I'm going to eat that seafood because it's good. I don't care if it came out of water that might be contaminated. Okay, fine. But I'm going to work a little bit harder. Mm. I'm not going to eat that chicken from KFC that God only knows where it came from. Because when you have a spiritual awakening and you start really opening yourself up to these things, mm. you can taste the difference. I can taste the difference between a, a food food like KFC or a chicken like that, as opposed to something that I cook at home that's a free range chicken. Yeah. It's, you definitely can tell the difference. Um, So these are, if we can tell the difference now with our taste, imagine what our bodies feel like when we're giving them something that's better for giving it something that's better for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Also being conscious of your surroundings. So this can come down to anything from home to work where If you're in an environment where you're unhappy, there's no change that's going to come there, right? Unless you're going to make a change. If you're working a job, a Uh corporate job, whatever kind of job it is, and you hate it and you just go to work every day because you need a paycheck, then you're not living consciously. You're not living for yourself. It's hard. It's very hard to, you know change and open these things and whatever but i'm telling you that once you start really living for what it is that you want to live for it changes a lot of things you have someone really close to you that shares to you with you constantly about their job situation Uh and think about the amount of time this person spends in their head oh yeah at the job yeah fighting yeah yeah you know exactly like planning their big going out with a bang right. or the big argument with the boss right. or this or that and then gets off of work, you know, reaches out to you and says, I'm this close. I'm yeah. this close. Right. This has gone on since they got the job right. most. Yeah. When you could be expending that energy on something positive. Looking for a better job. Towards a new job yeah, exactly. that you really loved mm-hmm. or finding a new job. Yeah. But – Instead, it's getting wasted. Yeah. Right there. It seems easier. Like, why does that seem... It seems easier to complain about it. Because you know the outcome. You right. know the outcome. It's yeah. going to be the same. Yeah. It's not, uh-oh, this is scary because I don't know what's around this other corner. Right. Exactly. So something else uh-huh. I had mentioned this week, you know, taking some things that you do that you feel like you're just going on autopilot, but also... 
explore some things that you don't normally explore uh -huh. and pay attention to them consciously, like, um, you know, fitness or we were talking about eating, money, your spiritual beliefs. Right. Anything that interests you that you haven't really put any effort into something new, yeah. try and and pay attention to how it feels when you're consciously doing it. You know? I think there's a misconception that a lot of people that don't know their calling or what their passion or path should be is that, well, I'm not artistic. Right. You know, or I'm not this. Right. I'm not that. Yeah. Um, well, all the people that you know in this world that you've seen do this, they didn't come out of the womb like that. No. They put time and right. effort and energy and right. belief into it. So if you don't know what it is, you can always pick something right. that appeals to you. So you go, okay, I'm not a great oil painter, but I'm going to go take some classes. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to learn how to do it. Yep. You know? Or Absolutely. maybe it's yoga. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm teaching yoga. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You got to put time in, you guys. It's not going to be bewitched and somebody, you know, wiggles their nose. No. And you've got this magic gift, yep. right? Samantha lived most of her life without that. Yes, you know did. she had a connection to animals, but she didn't. She wasn't using it at the level she's using it now. No, and so, and the same for me. Yeah, I had talent for a long time, but I wasn't really focusing it right. into one point. And please know that we're not saying that everybody should be self-employed because no. it's definitely not for everyone. I think no. this has been a horrible transition for you in some ways. Like, oh, my gosh. I mean, your calling <laughs> can be something that has nothing to do with your career. No, exactly. You know, it yeah. can be just a pastime. It can be an extracurricular activity. Maybe you like to go down to Skid Row and feed the homeless. Exactly, yeah. Yep. Doesn't have to be a career. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. But if it is like, let's say that you want to be a nurse and you just are like, I don't know how to do that. I, I don't see how that's possible. Well, what's the first step? Probably taking nursing classes, right? That doesn't mean you're going to be self employed. <coughs> you probably end up working for somebody. But conscious living means that you will look at your employer and work for somebody that you want to work for instead of being stuck in a place at a job that treats you wrong doesn't give you what you deserve, you know, that's where conscious living comes in is I know what I'm worth and I'm going to go after that. And if this isn't the place, you know, like with the nursing thing, if this isn't the hospital, I'll go to another one Yeah. and, and try until I find what's right for me. And that's scary. It is. But I wish, you know, there, I don't, if you've seen the movie, what about Bob uh -huh. and Richard Dreyfuss in that movie, he writes a book called baby steps. Yeah. I'd love to write a book called baby steps because I think that that is really what <coughs> all of Excuse this me. is about all of it. You can't just expect that you can snap your fingers nope. and this is all going to be the way that you're living. Even for me, even going through this process, I'm still not completely consciously living. But it is my goal every day to start doing that more. Yeah. It wasn't years ago. But no. now because I see it and I understand and I, I, I really want to be that type of person, I'm taking those baby steps every day. Yeah. So pick one thing, really. Just pick one thing that you want to work on as far as making it more brighter in your life and go for it. And then when you're done with that, try something else in another area. You know, whatever it is that you need to work on, wherever, you know, the, the con whether it's the eating or it's, you know, your purpose or exercising or whatever it is. Yeah. You, the products that you use, that's a whole other thing. Pay attention to one thing. <clears throat> And when you're done with that thing and you feel like you've, you know, accomplished just what you want with there, then move on to something else. Because trying to do things all at once is putting too much on you and yeah. it's not going to get you where you want to go if no. there's too much. Then you'll quit. You know, that's why people quit because they're like, I can't take this. I can't take this pressure. I can't, yeah. you know, whatever. But when you just break it down and do one thing at a time instead of 20 things at a time, it really changes things. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's all that we have time for. Oh, very good. Yeah. We could go on and on about this topic because yeah. there's so many areas that this can pertain to, you know. Yep. Yeah. That's true. Yep. Absolutely. But this was good. Yeah. And hopefully it's a start for anybody that's interested in yep. how to change their life a little bit. Yeah. You know, and um, this is, you know, I hate to say it because you're going to do this many times as far as I'm concerned or believe. But you still still should try to get the most out of each experience. Yes. 
So. And it's okay if it doesn't go the way that you think it's going to go. Like I keep seeing these videos on TikTok of people saying, I gave up sugar for a month and here's what happened. And then they go to the next clip and they're like, absolutely nothing. And then they're eating sugar again, you know? Okay. Well, if that's what happens, if you find that, you know, your body isn't feeling different or your mind isn't feeling different, well, maybe that isn't the place to put your focus in on. Maybe you figure something else out, you know, but everybody's different. That's true. Everybody's different. Trial and error and baby steps. There you go. Yep. Very good. Yes. Well, before we say goodbye, shall you share your information real quick? Yes. You can find me at Samantha Jones Psychic Medium, the TV show. Everything is there. Or my Etsy, where I have specialty readings for $20, which is really nice, Wow. Uh, is uh, Beyond the Bridge 11 at Etsy.com. Very good. And you. Yes. Uh, for my art, djonesartcollection.com for the web, at djonesartcollection for uh, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, I did release the picture of, um, which I forgot to say at the beginning of the, this episode, I did release a picture and shared that on Facebook of the Rat Pack, which I did recently. Um, that will be on my website as soon as possible because since we've moved, I have to find a new photographer and yeah. printer oh, yeah. that can service the things that I need done Yeah. Um, in order to get these pictures up on my website and to be uh, have prints available. Of them. So everything up to this one is available. Everything you see on my website, I can have those printed. Um, but I have to find a new one for this particular one because it has to be photographed. So, yeah. uh, so that's where that one stands. Very good. Soon. Very soon. Very good. Nobody took up the offer, no. which doesn't surprise me because I know a lot of people run behind in episodes, <clears throat> but also because of the shyness. Um, people yeah. don't want to be That's wrong. Okay. So if, but if you did like in your head, play this game and you did think the Rat Pack or something Vegas related, let us know. Cause right. we'd like to know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it again. You yeah. know, cause actually I can do it right now. Uh, I already know what I'm doing next. So if you want to take a <laughs> guess at who this person there could you be, go. um, then you're welcome to. I'd say the only person that can't chime in if they were to be listening would be a gentleman named Neil. <laughs> yeah. And you're not allowed to say. So, <laughs> yeah, you can't win. But other than that, um, yeah, you're welcome to to take a guess at this one. Yeah. So, But that won't be probably for another month or so. That one will be hard, way hard to guess, I think. Yeah. You'd have to really to tap into your Vegas. intuition with that one, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to really yeah. tap into mm-hmm. it. So, and then for my photography, one more time, uh, my Etsy shop is D Jones Photography 71. And then my Instagram photography is D Jones 71 Photography. And that's all for me. Fabulous. All right. Well, we hope that you guys got something out of this. That we do. Um, it's important. Yes. And take the time to, as they say, you know, we, the phrase, stop and smell the roses. Yes. That's kind of a dumb way to dumb it down for us is just be here, right here, right yep. now. Exactly. And those moments um, mindfulness because mm-hmm. the truth is is this goes by like a blink of an eye and we're laying on yeah, a bed dying and think about all the things we wish we would have done and one of them is just being in the moment it's so true so, so true try it for yourself yeah not for me not for anybody else but for you totally because your kid's not going to be aware of whether or not you're soaking up that moment with them or not no Mm-mm. this is a thing that you just carry inside as a memory yes so And we hope everybody has a wonderful week. That we do. And until next week. Bye.